you're in a good place mentally too where you could really yeah. just keep it going and, and just and like maintain it. your calm while on stage yeah dude speaking of which man I was working at the coffee shop, right? And I was like halfway through this iced latte. And my stomach was like, uh, uh, uh. uh oh. Before you go any further, heads up. We've been working on some product in here. It's getting a little <laughs> packed. And, you know, we think this, this some of this shit is ready to deliver, ready to go out the door. If you want to sign off, we can make we can make some room, take in more of that raw material, right? In other words, I had to take a dump. A little dump of Literally a big time dump of Rooney. Which is par for the course, right? In coffee work. And so I go to the bathroom. There's a sign on the bathroom door. Please ask an associate for the bathroom key. First of all, humiliating, right? To have to be like, excuse me, mister, I need to shed. I gotta go, I gotta go poo, you know, <laughs> to have to go up. Don't make me do that, right? And whenever a coffee shop has this bathroom key policy, it's always this giant quirky object with like a single key attached. Dude, 100%. <laughs> oh, you need a bathroom key? Here's here's a turkey baster. Here's <laughs> yeah. a giant, here's a wall clock. Here's my backpack. Like they just give you this giant thing with a tiny little key attached. And so he hands me this painted block of wood the size of a, of a GameCube. And it's like <laughs> in the shape, of a, the shape of a whistle, which is what the hell is that supposed to mean? So yeah, I go to the bathroom. Whistle while you poop. It whistle while I poop to do the big time, this, this big time dump a Rooney. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't believe they do this practice. Cause I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? I, I don't know. Like, I wanted to wash it. I wanted to like run it under hot water and like wash it afterwards. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do I wipe it down? Do I? Because it's just in here with me, you know? And I don't understand why. So, so I, I, I finish up. And I go to hand it back and I put it next to where the other bathroom key is, which is just on the same countertop that they put people's drinks on. Oh, that's so gross. I just set it down. So next to your latte is my fucking, is my, sh my shit wood. Boo-boo water. My boo-boo water. Next to, your, next to your mocha is my boca, you know? <laughs> next to your white mocha is my brown boca. I was just like, I can't believe they still do this. And you know how they, you know how they have like the health inspector, like we pass with flying colors kind of certificate on the wall. Yeah. On the way out, I, I just took it, dude. I just took it. I put it, <laughs> I put it in my bag and I've got it. And it's kind of like a citizen's arrest. I was like, you guys don't deserve this for sure. You took that A and you just drew a line next to it. You're like, A minus, motherfucker. That's... Yeah. I was like, some, let's dock some points, dude. It's really funny that you mentioned that because I've had to go to the bathroom like a few times at just ga random gas stations out here and yeah. um, it's always outside. It's never like they always keep the gas station outside and they always give you, it's basically the length of the end of a plunger is like <laughs> how long the thing is with, yeah, a tiny key. Just on a little it. key dangling. Here's a label. And I just put it under my arm while I'm doing stuff, and I'm like, I don't know where to leave this thing. Where like, do I set it down? I need to sanitize my hand after giving it back to you. Yeah. I give it back to you, and I'm like, that's so, I don't know. It's, it's What's nasty, the point? Man. What's the point? Like, in a gas station, I guess I understand, because you have some, some of a, uh, if we're sending some people up to the gates of heaven, you know, the best representatives aren't going to be found at a gas station, and I understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is like a nice little coffee shop with, like, people in their sh in their strollers and shit i don't know what the bathroom key is for just let us in here dude uh, to go up to me mister i've got a i got a poo poo i got a shit will you let me poo please they could probably afford like a privacy little keypad at, at the at the worst you know just give me the number on the, the receipt or i can ask you and i'll type it in and then i don't have to bother you then we don't have little little shit sticks all over near our coffee exactly then we're not passing back and forth these these little shit sticks. If things get out of hand, you change the change the number. That's all. I I can't I can't think too hard about surfaces that food is served on and germs because yeah. it, it it just leads you into a rabbit hole, dude. I I feel like the other day we were we were eating somewhere and you just see someone like like sneeze or like cough in their hand and they don't like wash their hands immediately afterwards. Yeah. And then they, you can see that they have your food on their hand as they deliver it to you. And you're like, okay, so her hand was on this side of the plate. I'm going to face that away from me. And anything in that vicinity is not going to be eaten and it's going to face away from me. And I will remember it the whole meal, but it's like, don't make me have to think about this. I don't yeah, exactly. just wash you just have your to remember. You just have to remember, like you think about the blast radius of the germs immediately, right? Oh, it's all Ugh. over.
And where does that come? Like, where does that germophobia come from? Because for a long time, I didn't feel it. But but now, like, if, if I have to touch the, like, if I have to clean the sink or the bathroom tub, just any sort of thing where I'm I'm cleaning the cracks of like a porcelain or some sort of surface, I feel like I have to wash my hands like every three seconds. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because something gets on your hand. It's almost like in your brain, you're thinking, I don't want to forget about this later. And then accidentally like do this. And I'm like, yeah. oh, no, that's on my face now. That that germ. I don't want this bacteria to get th- to get any ideas that, that yes. it, it, this is a permanent staying place to live and grow. Yeah. If I don't wash it, is it going to just seep into my skin? Because this layer of skin, there's not much there. You know, how protective is this to just getting into my bloodstream? It's very, it's very nubile. It's very nubile flesh. <laughs> nubile, <laughs> nubile flesh. I mean, were you, were you not a, not a health OCD boy as a child? Really? No. With germs? I mean, and I'm still not. I think I have like average, uh, like hand washing, uh, what's it called? Habits. Pretty average. You do a 15 second, you don't go the full 20. Yeah. It's not, I'm not, I'm not gross and, and it's, and it's contextual. Like, you know, if I'm in the privacy of my own home, I'm not going as hard as I am in public. Oh yeah, sure. But I wasn't that way as a child. Were you? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I was always paranoid. I had like brain cancer or something. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Then you look back and you're you're just thinking, oh, that's that's anxiety, baby. You just had child anxiety. You're just an anxious little boy. I think what's weird is my dad was very OCD with washing his hands, and yeah, for a while. And now I feel like he's not. I'm just so confused by it. He would, we would be out to dinner or something, and somebody would come up and be like, "Hey, Tom, we're going on blah blah blah," and he'd, he'd say, "Hey, hey, what's going on?" And he'd shake his hand, and then <laughs> the guy would shake my hand, and and then after the guy left, my dad would look over and be like, "All right, we gotta go wash our hands." I saw, I saw that guy, uh, I saw that guy sneeze earlier, like like that sort of stuff. So I think I get it from that. But now, man doesn't give a shit. He's shaking everybody's hand. He'll eat a quesadilla right after shaking somebody's hand. I'm like, where did that go? Because now he's on the side of he's he's on the side of freedom. He's on the side of don't control (laughs) me, the government. You can't tell me to wash my hands, dude. I can't believe this like this pro choice, uh, pro life shit going on right now. It's just like oh my god, it's so bogus, dude. Uh, The way the right the right is is doing such a fucking good job of being like the leak. They're they're not even taught. They're they're just so pissed about this leak. First of all, it's so it's weird to me the 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 term pro life. Like, like, it just doesn't seem like a pro- the right name for it. Yeah. Like, pro-choice makes sense because what you're fighting for the choice. With pro-life, you're not, it's not necessarily like, the, wouldn't the opposite would be, wouldn't the opposite of pro-life be kind of like pro-debt? Like, it just doesn't make, it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't seem like the right name, pro-life. I, I think that's what they're trying to say, though. They're trying to be like, oh, you're not pro-choice, you're pro-death to a person who's pro-choice. Like, that's what they're trying to do with their messaging i think which is totally fucking stupid but it's just so ironic because like isn't your whole thing like freedom of speech freedom of autonomy freedom to choose like yeah if you're not pro-choice you're you're pro being controlled uh you know what i mean yeah 100 um, percent, dude it's it's just hypocrisy dude it's just it's a pretty big complete naming and issue. utter I, hypocrisy yeah, i think you're i think you know you've just been you've just been brainwashed you've been you know corralled into believing this term that's not even right pro pro life yeah because the pro choice it makes sense it, you know you want people to be able to choose to uh, have an abortion or not within a reasonable like framework and then rather than them not having the choice you know also i thought you wanted I, what happened to mind your own business honestly you right. know <laughs> that seems like such a thing that was pushed during uh I don't, I don't know. I mean, everybody says that you should mind your business, mo- own business, but I feel like conservatives on the, the whole are very much mind your own fucking business type of people in an aggressive way. Yeah. It's like, why don't you just take a, take a little bit of your own medicine there then and mind your own fucking business. Right. The, hop- the hypocrisy is, the hypocrisy is real, very real, you know? Yeah. It's and pretty it's like, maddening, dude. I mean, this is out of our depth of field. We're no political experts, but it just seems like. If you're rich and you need an abortion, you're just going to go, you're just going to do medical tourism and go to where you can get one, Mm -hmm. go to whatever state you can get one. If you're kind of smart and you're not necessarily rich, you're just going to not have kids, right? You're going to like, be like, kids, um, then. And so what's going to happen is 
is pretty much just poor people are going to have more babies. Yeah. And there's no way for someone to, if you look at the map of places where, you know, I mean, it's already so bad in the South, but like looking at a map of where you have to go, if you, if you need to get an abortion, it's fucking crazy, dude. Looking at like, I don't know if it's Alabama or maybe Mississippi or something, but it's like you'd have to drive so far to to get to a state to to be able to to get it done. And it's like if you're poor, one, you probably can't you could probably barely afford the abortion as it is, let alone the drive yeah. or the flight or the time off of work. It's just like so fucking bogus. Yeah, you can barely afford the condoms, you can barely afford the plan B, like Jesus, dude. I mean Yeah. And don't talk about condoms. Don't talk about safe sex. Don't talk about all that. Like, keep that out, you know? It's like, well, what is it then? It's the same thing with guns, dude. It's like, it's like, all right, what about the, it's like, it's like nothing. It's like, we're, we're just going to pray. It's like, right. you're going to pray. Is just, it's fucking... If you're pro-life, then you're just anti, anti-choice. You know, you're anti-choice. You're for women specifically. You're anti-woman if you're pro, if you're pro, uh, pro-life that's pretty much what it comes down to did you see any coded um instagram statuses that were like you saw someone say something and you were like oh you're definitely pro uh or pro pro pro-life you're definitely not pro-choice when when i when i come across a story that's like a long paragraph i'm like okay what's the seek what's the subtle like am i about to discover this person's not who they who they thought with they were (laughs) i haven't gotten i haven't gotten anything like that um so far that's been disappointing which is a good sign i think of people uh that we surround ourselves with um yeah so that so that's good but yeah i haven't seen any of that i mean i saw one or two where i was like yeah i know what's going on here really were they like old old, no uh, they were younger but i know they're pretty christian or were they people from that you used to know yeah yeah i haven't hung out with in years where uh, i i like some of the stuff that they do musically or whatever and then seeing that you're just like god damn it like, that's kind of yeah. disappointing <laughs> it's like bummer big yeah bummer. big bummer how did we get here dude it's so it's so regressive like even i feel like nobody else in the world is really is really thinking you know what like re- i feel like republicans or and anyone on the right and the far right they have a really good sense of compound interest. Like they're out here, they're out here mining for followings in like the tiniest little corners of America, right? Mm-hmm. These tiniest little subsets. And they understand that that's what the bigger whole is, ma- is made out of. Yeah. So this takeover is just, they have complete control because they're just in every nook and cranny. Meanwhile, you know, the progressive leftist movement is very like self cannibalizing in a way dude it's so annoying everybody like picks on each other for the yeah. smallest things while the republicans are like let's just fucking take over dude and man i was always so i always had the the belief that you know it's the old it's the old that'll die out and once the old the old dies out then there'll be way less republicans but it's scary to see like you know these white dudes that are just like so fu- like Madison Cawthorn and like just those younger like representatives. You're like, mm-hmm. damn, you're in your fucking twenties and you're like super right wing. And it's just, it's just, it's just a bummer. Cause you, in my mind, I was like, all right, you know, by 2020, they'll yeah. all be dead. All the, uh, most of the Republicans will be dead. Yeah. All the, but, all the racists are like above a certain age and you're just like, yeah, oh, it's not true. Yeah, it's like no, you have this this group of younger people that that just somehow got wrapped up in it and it's like, well, how does that happen? Like why are you such a a fucking dick? <laughs> it's like don't we want I don't even I don't even know. It, I feel it, it seems obvious like if you want if you want people to keep their babies, the, it seems like the mo, the the two most obvious ways to do that is to one make having a baby make having a baby more appealing so the idea that if you had a baby they would be like guaranteed a certain quality of life a certain and you and your baby would be con- guaranteed a certain like modicum of enjoyment of life um where you you know you're not going to be fucking on the streets just cuz you had a kid like you know that's step number 1 right yeah just yeah just make it uh just actually care about a child that's born 
Exactly. They don't they don't care, dude. It's so easy. I feel like there's a really good quote about unborn children where it's it's the easiest it's basically an imaginary friend that you're that you're uh they don't even exist yet and you're you can you can cha- I don't know. People it's such an easy cause. You're so you're so like such a champion for these imaginary hypothetical people and then once they become a real thing, you're like oh, I don't give a fuck about you anymore. It's like what? Yeah. You're I like I don't pushing for the make believe when we got we got real ass shit happening then and you don't get you don't care. Can I also <sighs> say one thing that's mm. been bothering me about politicians? Why the fuck are people able to be in the Senate or House that are over eighty years old? Yeah, like eighty years old, like seventy five seems too old. Like Mitch it McConnell does, Nancy Pelosi. Like Diane Feinstein, they're all so old. It's like, dude, you guys are too old. <laughs> and aren't we like, aren't we electing brand new ones this year for the House? Aren't we like replacing well, everybody? I think no. I think Nancy Pelosi's running again, dude. And she's eighty. I think she's eighty-eight. Man, hold on. How old is Nancy Pelosi? Not to be a fucking like ageist, but that's just too old. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think of what do you think of Bernie? You think he's too old? Okay, she's eighty two. Nancy Pelosi's eighty two. I mean, I don't know how old is Bernie Sanders. Let's see. Bernie Sanders, he's eighty. I mean, he's old, man. He's I old. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. There's there's midterms this year. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what's going on in in November. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, like you said, I'm not a professional. I don't know anything, but I just think people are too old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're too old, you motherfuckers. You're too old. <laughs> when I'm 80, dude, I don't want to be. If I'm producing music still, or we still have our podcast when we're 80, you know, that's yeah. fine, I guess. But not not making laws. I don't know, man. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be law making when I'm when I'm that age. No way. No, bro. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be eating ice cream. I'm trying to be pretty much just eating and. Yeah making beats with the homies but never putting them out you know i'm all right i'm living off i'm living off the land what country should what like where should we go i think we should go to new zealand that is that is what i hear the move is man i'd go to new zealand maybe we can get like a little hobbit house yes for all the homies we all just live like in the hills what how much is property in new zealand (laughs) uh can we get some land out there can we build the h new compound out there Ah, oh, damn! That's where we got to start. Yeah, the people's the people's golf course where we're where we all just kind of have our own country club. Oh, and we're yes. out there. We kind of do our skills. It's decentralized. We've got a you know we've got our own coin. We've got our own governance. Uh, we've got our own our own currency. Yeah, you you work for uh, equity and coins. Yes. And we're, <laughs> yeah, we're 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 people's own, dude. H New is is a is a family employer owned. Oh my god. Let's touch back on some of the stuff we we uh talked about like uh, on the last pod. Yeah, yeah. One the the body the bodybuilding, right? The Oh yeah, yeah. The idea that we're going to get um when you get back we're going to try to do this like fitness tip. What do you think we should do? Should we should we just put it out there? Should we put like our stats up, like make make almost like a like character profiles and put like our actual weight and like our goal weight and like body type and kind of compare muscular structures and post up. I think w- I uh, let me say this I think we should honestly like talk to a fitness person like Dougie I don't I think he's doing something else now but you know he's one of the fucking most fit people I know yeah or AJ a- AJ's always doing fitness stuff and like just get clued into those specific attributes where we're like, these are, these are our goals. Like, how do we achieve them? Like, what, what would you, what is the workout term for this goal? You know? So we're very touch, touched in to, mm. you know, like, instead of just being like, I want to get this much, maybe, maybe to know, to know the lingo and like what, what yeah. we should be the, the world that we're in this much muscle mass, this much mm-hmm. like the the body metrics. fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are your KPIs and stuff. Um, weight, weight, weight. Ideal weight. We should be. Yeah, at maybe all we'll that. Phone, we'll call him in, phone him in to the to the H new chat, and we'll mm-hmm. we'll get like the rundown, and then we'll do a little a little plan. We got to raise the stakes uh, somehow. Okay. On top of the accountability, we have to have some sort of winning losing. <laughs> 
factor to it, and I don't know what that is. Is it a we both win situation, or you win, I lose? Like, one of us has to lose, one of us has to win situation. Correct, correct. One of us has ah, to lose. okay, okay. That will probably make it a little more uh, difficult to, f- to slack off, so that's good. Yeah, it's got to be some sort of, right? So it's, it's the atomic habits thing. You make the good habit more appealing, and you, make mm-hmm. the, and you, get, you get scared of the bad habit, right? So, yeah. you know, maybe it's something like, you know, if you lose, you got to you got to put your dick pic on the uh, H News story. <laughs> <laughs> we got to finally put a dick up on the uh, OnlyFans that we have. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot we have one. Did I did I ever tell you that uh, with that OnlyFans situation? I remember mm-hmm. when I was telling uh, I was telling Hannah about it and she thought I was just straight up like covering for the fact that I wanted to like be on OnlyFans like. Do, like like subscribing to girls on there or something uh, <laughs> that was your way in yeah yeah i was like no i literally <laughs> think it's just funny to have a comedy podcast having an only fans is really funny to me yeah it, it's like did you know porn is free um, <laughs> yeah yeah did you know i can there's 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 a couple hundred sites i could access for that look i'm no i'm 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 no i'll say it right now you know i'll admit all my vices on this podcast and and pornography is definitely one of them. It's a tempting, it's a tempting vice, dude. It's, it's yeah. everywhere. And in as much as I've looked into the OnlyFans world, I appreciate the creator economy. Obviously, here we are, you know? Yeah, yeah got Patreon. It's just what I've seen on there so far, what I've seen come from there is a little bit, it's kind of mids, you know? It's mid. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, a lot of it's kind of mid. like, And... I- I don't like follow the creators well enough to be invested in there. But, you know, then again, I don't know. We might have to get some people on here to, to vouch. But low key underneath, be using it as a way to be more on OnlyFans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, you know, that's the main reason. I mean, uh, you know, I try to try to stay away from the, the, the big P. You know, I, I probably yeah. dabble once or twice a month and I'm like, fuck. I get yeah. mad at myself for slipping up, but. That's you like know. with, uh, no, go ahead. No, no, but, but, you know, I, I, if I was more invested in it, I, I think I'd be like, all right, I gotta probably, you know, I gotta give something to the creators, blah, blah, blah. But I wish there was yes. a variety pack you could do, you know, I don't want to be like right. obsessed with one only per only fan, you know, I don't want to be right. That'd be I like, like if, like you, f- if you had like a, one. a Netflix, like if you paid 10 bucks for a streaming service and all you got was, was John Hamm content. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, what? I don't just want to watch Mad Men, dude. I, I gotta, yeah. like gotta, gotta jump gotta... over to the office every once in a while. Right, exactly. I want to do, I want to do other things, or like, yeah, you, genre specific. Um, so it is an interesting. It is an interesting culture. I mean, that's kind of like with VR. I've been really interested in trying out VR. I was over at, we were over at Carrie's last week, and I played. Oh um, yeah. Some of the VR stuff. I was up in VR chat, you know, and I was like, have, you know, have y'all checked out like the VR the vr porn have you, have you all seen what, what's up with that and she was like i, I haven't but my friend has and, and you know she was like she said it was just very like large and in your face and i was like it probably seems it probably seems like i'm doing a blake right now and just pretending to be into vr so i can low-key like, like yeah you know it's just the future it's just a really interesting space <laughs> okay. meanwhile i'm just like getting fucking yeah yeah you're having a full-on conversation with them but you're actually just like watching porn like you're getting you're yeah, getting yeah, blown. Yeah. I'm just getting this fucking is crazy. Whoa. Getting yucked up. I'm like, whoa, you know, yeah, this is the future. Did you watch it while you were there? Uh, no. Yeah. I couldn't figure yeah. out how to use the browser that way. <laughs> it's it's not it's not as easy. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a slippery slope <laughs> to, to to get into yeah. the VR yeah. stuff, you know. Once you oh. once you go there, it's like, man. It'd be weird to be dizzy though while watching porn. I feel like I get dizzy every time I do VR, and I I don't know. Yes, there was one point where I got where I got pretty dizzy, and I was like, okay, we got to work on this, um, as we've discussed before. But uh, hold on, I want to get I'm gonna get a little uh, I gotta get my water and a little something. Get your water. Get your wawa, dude. I came in here way hungrier and uh, thirstier than I thought I I would be. So I'll be I'll be right back. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Can you see my legs? Can you see my legs? You can't see my legs. He's probably going to cut this out, but this is the best RX bar in existence is the mint chocolate. And every time I go to the store, it is very difficult and challenging to find. But I managed to find some 
Let's see. Hmm. 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 Looking at the room, around the room, seeing the hand in the back, in a cup. Looking at guitars on the wall. It looks like a thing that you're bon on, 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 on. It's a trash can in the back left. Looking at a curtain. My commit theft. Trying to understand the locomotion of a singular man. Yeah. Yeah. Be interesting to do a pot alone. That was hard. Were you talking? Barely. Oh, that's going to be fun. Dude, uh, so one thing I was going to tell you is I was, I'm trying to finish up this book. I feel like it's very dense, but really, really good. The 4,000 Weeks book. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And there's a part in there that I was reading yesterday that kind of blew my fucking mind. I cannot imagine doing this. But uh, he, he was taking this history class. It was either a history class or an art history class at, on like, at Harvard or something. Harvard. Harvard. Sorry, I broke your 300-year-old doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> the quotes never end. Who's the author again? His name is uh, Oliver Berkman. So he took this class, and the first assignment that sh- this teacher gives is to go to an art museum and to stare at a painting or a sculpture for three hours. Oh. You can't use your phone, obviously. You can't you know, use any sort of distractions. You can go to the bathroom, but that's it. And you have to be there for three hours and stare oh at a painting God. or a sculpture. Basically, the whole chapter is about patience. But I was just imagining doing that assignment. and. <laughs> oh my god man i don't i don't know if i could do it that's a long time why 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 is that ass- the assignment exactly so she discusses how everyone you know is probably doing homework where it's just piling on and so many assignments and keeping you yeah. so busy and this gives you a moment to you don't have to really do anything but just be there for three yeah. hours and also she says the whenever you go to a museum you think that you've digested the whole painting after looking at it for, what, 30 seconds to a minute, each painting. Yeah. But she says there's so many little things that you that you don't notice in a painting unless you stare at it for, you know, at least a while. She says everybody has the same reaction where they go an hour in, you're like, what the fuck? Did I choose a wrong painting? Like, <laughs> There's nothing going on here. This sucks. And then 80 minutes in, he started to notice, oh, shit, there's a person i didn't notice in the background there yeah i didn't see them before oh there's a shadow is that a fourth person oh the person's ear is similar to the the squirrel's body so we're we're finding Mm -hmm. symmetry in the squirrel and and animals and humans and all this stuff and it and it just all these things start ticking after a certain amount of time me i'd like to just read a book (laughs) that says those specific things, and then I'm done in ten minutes. But I get, I get the point of it. But that's a I get long the point. Time. It's like it's like finding sake, finding the sacred in the mundane. You know, trying yes. to slow down, really slow down. Like if you if you just slow down, because everything's so distracting, right? Especially yeah. as me, a little neurodivergent boy with ADHD, ADD, the pull of distractions is so is so strong. It's hard not to get sucked into that. Yeah. But if I am able to get rid of all these fucking distractions, then I can harness that ADD superpower of hyper focus and yes. just and just really get into the flow state on one thing. But it's so hard because the deeper we get in, the more every the attention economy is just pulling us into shallow shit that makes us like not feel as good, you know? So I totally get it as well. But like to do it three hours, that seems like uh, that would be rough. I had a great idea yeah. where <laughs> or uh, this idea for like a video where the headline is like, I spent an hour outside doing nothing. You know, you do this whole kind of intro where you're like, best selling New York Times Cal, Cal Newport uh, talks about <laughs> digital minimalism and focusing more on deep work and uh, shedding away these distractions of the world. So I decided to go outside uh, with, with, you know, nothing but, but me and, uh, you know, have a camera set up to, 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 my journey and, and, and see, and just see what it, what it's like to 
to just observe nature and life and and then you just get like almost like too like too into it like too into the prep you're like of course and and and, and to start this journey i'm gonna need a few things so i got a water bottle like <laughs> like i brought this book you know <laughs> so, uh, i got i got this blanket that was designed by you know and you can find it in, in the link in my bio and then you have like a whole plan you're like for the first 20 minutes i'm gonna oh just think God, about yeah. this and then like you know you do the thing and then you cut to the end of the video like kind of your review and you're like <laughs> you know hey guys like wow i had i had such a it was such a revelatory experience you know my observations were i immediately noticed this kind of shedding of chaotic energy in my mind and you just go through this whole deep thing because you were like outside and yeah. like the goal was like an hour and you're like you know i really loved it and then at the end you're just kind of like uh i did however not make it to the entire hour i was only <laughs> i was only able to get 40 about 45 minutes in but even then uh you know i learned a lot like you just do this whole thing and you can't even fucking do it for an hour you're like I like the idea also of uh, being like, and here's my review. And speaking of reviews, this episode is brought to you by Rotten Tomatoes. Have you guys heard of it? Just <laughs> putting ads in to, to supposed to be this like peaceful video review. And it's just filled with fucking so ads just fucking throughout. Poof, poof, poof. Yeah, yeah. Doing nothing is really hard because when I try to do nothing, I just fall asleep every time. <laughs> Right. I was trying to like, Same. I was like, I was like listening to Marvin Gaye yesterday, just like laying down. Cause I saw this video of Rick Rubin and this other dude listening to what's going on. And, <laughs> and it was kind of funny cause Rick Rubin was just like, just like vi <laughs> vibing out. And, and the guy keeps saying like, Oh, and these background vocals are coming home. Here we go. What's going on? Just that stuff. And I, and I was like, as I was listening to it and kind of laughing at a little bit of it, cause it's just funny to watch people react while they listen to music. I was like, that song's fucking dope. So I laid down and I was like, I'm just going to like listen to this record and, and check it out. And I laid down. I'm asleep in like one minute. Like I fell yes. asleep in like one minute and I woke up oh. and I'm at the end of the record and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> like I fell asleep for the My whole God. record. I, I can't, I just can't like not do anything. It's really hard. Dude, I do that with meditations all the time. I like set aside time to meditate and like after hearing the first like couple minutes of it, I like wake up to it being over. I'm like, I didn't meditate at all. I just took a nap. <laughs> yeah, I just fell uh, asleep. <laughs> I think that's why you got to sit up like really mm -hmm. straight. I, that's got to be why you have to do that. Exactly. I'm like, you know what? I, I got to lay down. I was thinking about that too. Just like I sleep in a certain position at night and I feel like I used to be able to be okay with sleeping in other positions. But now it's like my back is trained to be in that position and I can't sleep unless I'm in formation you know oh yeah sprawled yeah i do i do the kind of i do like the pillow underneath pillow like arm underneath yes. the pillow almost like the flying kind of kick yeah. on my right side like if i'm on my, on my left side i can't do it if i'm on my, on my back i can't do it anymore it goes back to this we got to do the we got to we got to get fit man we got to get these muscles engaged you know i yeah I'm, I'm like do we do a membership at a gym do we do like planet fitness like what i know do we do, we do like exactly. a month of class pass and we try like all different like, like oh, we try like man. a boxing class like a biking class I'm like already nervous i'm like i hate the uh the like out of it feeling when you just work out so hard i love it afterwards but during it it's just it's like man my it hurts. that just destroyed my ass like i'm fucking do i'm like dead right now yeah um, to push through that hard is fucking rough time i gotta get more protein in dude i i feel like just seeing uh i don't know you ever you know you see a certain celebrity and you're just like man they got a nice bod they got a nice Bod, but then, but then it's like, am I, you know, I was like seeing Andrew Santino and I was like, I like his fit. He's not like a, you know, six pack fucking kind of guy, but he's, he's beefy. He's got, the, yeah, he's beefy. I don't know if I have that body type because he's kind of the height of my brother. And I feel like, mm. I feel like when you're that height, you can get that kind of beefiness to you. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I guess I got, I won't know until I try. So, right. Right. So I really try actually. I've never actually really tried. Dude. You would definitely see some bulk up on your arms. Like that's the fun part of working out is the first the first few months where you're like, whoa, I, f I, I feel the pump. Like you get the Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're like, I get it now. I got the pump, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was coming. But it didn't coming. So we'll, we'll yeah. see how that goes. And I need it, dude. I got, y'all know I got gout. Y'all know I got that gout bout and I need to do all this anti-inflammatory stuff now. So has it flared up in a minute? Yeah, it just flared up a couple days ago. Oh, seriously? Yeah, which fucking sucked. So I immediately went, got some, got some stuff, and now I'm 
trying to crank down on the diet harder. You know, y'all know I got so many afflictions. I got asthma and like narcolepsy and, and all this shit. So now I'm going to, you know, today I'm going to uh, go hard, but like I'm going to be back on my healthy shit. But, you know, speaking of like fake experiences and, or not fake, but like just virtual reality and stuff in the, in the digital world, there's some interesting real world stuff coming on. They just did, they just down the street from, our, uh, from us, they just propped up, you know, those like street carnivals, you know, where they like put up in a post up in a parking lot, they kind of put it together overnight. And then after a, f- a week or so, they just kind of pack up and leave. Yeah, yeah. Got all these prop up rides. There's a Ferris wheel. Everything is real, kind of, you know, waiting for a class action lawsuit to happen. Like it's very, it's very like (laughs) they just propped one up down the street, and I kind of want to check it out. I'm wondering um, what kind of stuff I should do on there. Should I try that Ferris wheel? Should I do? You know, maybe you guys can tell me if there's anything that you'd like me to go check out and comment on at the Madison County Fair. Are you a rides fan? Do you like doing the rides? Yeah, I don't. I don't mind the rides. I'm a little bit scared of stuff, but I'd I'd, I'd like to not be as scared. There's a lot of horror stories, but uh, I would do it. I would do it for y'all. You know how a fair is. A fair is like you can you, you can take some. It, it takes a minute to walk around the fair. Is this yeah. like straight up just in a parking lot, like a bigger parking lot? It's literally just in a parking lot. You could you could you could lap the whole place in like five minutes. Oh shit! Okay. Damn, how they fit all that in there? You got to do the, uh, they have that UFO spinny thing? They do. Of course they what? do. What? How is that? Th- oh, wow. They've got a have UFO spinny thing. They've got like the ring, the full like ring where you're just kind of like whoop, whoop. Yeah. Oh, God. They have a Ferris wheel. Ferris They've wheel, got the yeah. like funhouse mirror thing adventure. Um, yes. Bring, and then they get have that like that nose. thing that swings you around. And it's literally like you're just in a parking lot, like next to the next to Gallatin Road, and you could go to fucking Madison Furniture Outlet, like <laughs> right afterwards. And uh, and they kind of even made it more compact than last. Like last year, they took up the whole parking lot, and now they just have like a section of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> pay, they pay a le- yeah lesser cost to just yeah. just have a quarter of the parking lot. That's very uh, interesting. And the Renaissance Fair is back. Oh wow! Was it here this time? Was that last year? At yep. This same time. Yep. Holy shit! There's no booze. That's a, that's the new thing. I think the Tennessee government has kind of co-opted the fair. They bought it from that castle guy that we were talking about. I think, <laughs> no shit. I think he finally was was hodling long enough that he kind of he kind of sold over the rights. Now he's like, yeah. He's like, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a Renaissance bubble. Like the the medieval bubble's about to pop. The fucking medieval market's about to crash, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm selling at the top, baby. Um, yeah, dude. And now that it's like government owned or uh, affiliated, they're gonna remove booze from the equation, which is isn't that crazy? Yeah, that seems like a dumb idea. Yeah, it seem it seem I always thought that big booze was was in the pockets of the government of Tennessee. So I am surprised at that, honestly. Yeah, like what are they? We're gonna are make they it more family, make family fun. friendly. Like, this is where we get drunk, boy. Yeah, I'm trying to get fucked up with a broadsword. Now I can't do like you know we could have done axe throwing like on another level. Um, <laughs> what kind wanna, of bar wanna, wench? Yeah. What kind of bar maiden isn't drinking? What kind of what kind of ogre is not getting fucking tanked? Dude, they're just gonna be serving like ginger beer and shit. The stuff that'll make you feel even worse than actual booze will if you drink too much of it. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. The times are yeah. the times are changing, so we'll see. I mean, I'm I am going to get some garb, uh, and we are gonna go. Hell yeah, dude! Get dressed up. Get dressed up and go. You going this weekend? Or are you going? You just going in the next? It goes four. Weeks? It's it's going four weekends. Uh, so we'd like to either go the second or third weekend. Probably it's gonna be the most busy in the first and last weekend. So we're gonna kind of yeah. see the weather. Um, hit the we hit the pool for the first time this season uh, last oh. week, which was fun. Uh, but yeah, you know what I was wondering. In my life, we're so we're so ADD on this podcast. But what's your people love it? People love it. What's your screen time looking like these days? Average screen time on your phone. Can I tell you exactly what it is? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, look up screen time. I'm using my phone as a camera, so I can't really I can't really do it right now. But um, I know I know in general what it is. I think that, let's see, screen time, screen time, my screen time, my daily average is three and a half hours. How much? Three and a half hours is my average daily. And that's with a 20 minute limit on Instagram. Isn't that crazy? 
and and my my Instagram is also my Instagram, Twitter, and all social media. I also have that on a twenty minute uh, limit. Dude, it helps so much. And and you have Hannah know the password, and you don't. Yeah, and I don't know the password. Oh uh, yeah, I do that with Jenny too, and it helps so it helps so much. If you knew it, you just fucking type it in. I I tried it for a minute, and it, it, when mm-hmm. I knew the password, and I was like, this is pointless. My my screen time's probably down to like two and a half hours. Uh, oh nice, average. dude, that's good. Yeah, but I know. Well, first of all, isn't that crazy? So if if you're at like three and a half hours out of seven days in the week. One day is spent on your phone. I don't like that. <laughs> and and two and a half seems and three and a half seems low, right, for an average person. Yeah. So an average person is doing more than one day out of the week, looking at your phone. And and the thing that I I really like don't like about the about the phones is that we were talking earlier about just doing nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. When you just kind of want to sit down and like look at your like look at your phone it can be fun for it can be fun sometimes but but you're not actually doing nothing you're actually doing so much right so you're much. actually you're actually like fucking hardcore slamming on the serotonin button just yeah. by scrolling because the stimulus is coming at you so fast and like taking up so much of your uh like attention you think you're like taking a break and doing nothing and you it, you couldn't be farther from like taking a break you know what i mean you're just you're just yeah. running into into overdrive like to really do nothing you have to do nothing like no screens no anything we should add another thing to our workout thing we should make it so we try to get our screen time down to like an hour and a half dude i'm so down i'm so down like take a screenshot at a certain time of day like before we go to bed and like put it in a folder so we can like track it too i want to gather some like our audience i want to see what y'all's screen time is like send us your screen time send us your average screen times i want to see what people are working with i would also like to know what what apps are taken up because it'll tell it'll break it down per app so i want to see what apps you guys are spending down uh you know like like what are yours i know it's got to be safari Oh, dude. Okay. So this makes sense. Google Maps is my most used because I have that See, open. See, how that's many hours? the fucked up thing. Eight and a half hours, 46 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So so I had an app that would be, that was like that too. Like one app that it just had to be on was way yeah. higher than the others. And then once I took that out of the equation, that's when it went down to like two and a, uh, two and a half. So that's probably what you're, we're probably about similar with screen time. Can I take Google Maps out of the equation? I don't. Can I like n- not? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know. Maybe there is a way to unfactor that, but we'll do the we'll do the math. Um, it does feel good to know that it, it's mainly that. And then the <laughs> yeah. next one, yeah, is uh, Safari. Yeah. Well, what are you doing on Safari? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just Run, look really? up a bunch, dude. I'm just like, this is the problem is I'm in this habit in the morning of when I wake up, I look at New York Times. Okay, great. Mm. Then I look at my bank shit. Okay. Then I just like Google a fucking restaurant or I do a blah. It's like, I need to not, I need to, I'd really love to ban myself from using my phone. Unless of course it's maps till yeah. like 10 AM or something. Like yeah, I need dude. to just throw it, but I keep forget every time I always forget. I just need to throw it away. If that's the first thing you do in the day, I get sucked into that shit. Like, school. Well, it's dude, a fucking scrolling. boom. It's mm-hmm. that serotonin, dude. It hit. You're right. Ugh. It's like immediately, right when you wake up, it's like, no, you need to yeah. not have that as the first thing. Because then you're just like, it's like sugar, dude. It's like putting a fucking, yeah. like one of those crystal s- lollipop things in your mouth right when you wake up. It's like, don't do yes. that. I'm straight up going to like, uh, I'm going to get one of those like phone safes, you know, where you can like put it in a lock box for a certain amount of time. Wait, you um, can do that? Yeah. They sell these like lock boxes. And you can still see your screen, like in case anything like comes up, you can still see it, but you can't like go grab it and touch it. And the thing stays locked for a certain period of time. What um, if you have an alarm going off? Then you're an idiot. You, know? you got to turn it. Yeah, that's my problem, dude. That's me just fucking snoozing and then forgetting I snooze and then it's going off for three hours. And just put it outside. Just put that shit outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just fucking put Shut the lockbox in a lockbox. <laughs> So, yeah, so guys, show us show us what your fucking screen times be be looking like. Um, do you know anything about this whole Dave Chappelle attack that happened? I read a really quick thing that said it was a Trump supporter that attacked him, and he like he like made it sound like it was like a trans rights activist or something. Did he really say that? Ah, uh, this is a headline. That's why I'm like headline. <laughs> what what uh, actually? What did he actually do? The obvious take is that like the Chris the Chris Rock uh, 
Will Smith thing, like open the floodgates for this kind of thing, right? I guess, dude. I don't understand why. Yeah. How how does somebody get? And I think the dude had like a knife too, right? Yeah. But Dave Chappelle's fucking jacked. I feel like he would whoop anyone's ass. Yeah, I think he would too. We were just talking about him last pod. Um, Cause he came, but he, he sucker, he sucker tackled him essentially. Like he fucking looks like a quarterback, just like, Doosh. So Ugh. I think he got the element of surprise in there, but then the security came in and really, really knocked his ass down. Um, I heard, I heard it was Jordan Peterson that tackled him. Oh God, I'm tired of your comedy. You're a strong man. Do you know yeah. exactly what happened or do you, do you? No, I was, oh, was yeah. going to lean on you. I guess we don't really have a take on this. <laughs> yeah. Except, yeah, uh, was... you know, they're, they, I... they're saying since, since they gave Will Smith, they let him stay, they let him stay. After he did, after he did the slap, and then they gave him an award and a sta- and a standing ovation. That kind of like opened up the floodgates to be like, hey, if you if you're looking for some shine, you know, you can go ahead and tackle the comedian, and you're gonna you're gonna be loved by everybody. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, dude? Yeah, yeah I I th- I think if he would have just straight up slapped him, and he wasn't like, and he didn't yell afterwards, I think that would have been the shit. Like, but I think the fact that he yelled keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth keep i think my that uh name out your fucking mouth is i think and his own mouth was so big I oh think. it was so big dude yeah. yeah i think i think if he didn't yell that it would have been a little bit better i think so too for he him. just seemed unhinged man yeah we gotta pissed. have a zero tolerance policy for that like <laughs> you know you can't be you can't do assault you can't be doing assault on on no. a, on an award show especially and, when it's known general. for roasting dude people are gonna keep people are gonna be roasting dude. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know she had alopecia. No, me either. Yeah. No, me either. I didn't even know she was in G.I. Jane. I didn't she know ain't. any of that. <laughs> Wasn't she in the original? Wait, was she? I think she was in the original G.I. Jane. Ah. Uh, and so he was like G.I. Jane 2 because she was had the buzz, the buzz cut. Am I, I right on that? Was. Morgan, pull it up. Morgan, I don't think she was, buddy. Should have been. She's big then. Oh are we all just fucking tired of everything? Because I'm surprised this Roe v. Wade situation isn't causing more uh, stuff. Like, I see people just kind of posting regular, like, on, on socials, you know? Yeah, and then I'm it's surprised. like, oh, another, another, like, world fucking, another USA altering fucking issue in the news. Just lump it in with everything else, you know? It's like, yeah. Like, at this point, I, we're all just like, what the fuck? I think a lot of it is, yeah, I don't have any faith in our fucking system at all anymore, which is not a good way to be because you have to fight back and be we gotta pissed get, and we got to get into the shit. cracks of and you know we got to do the the what the what the repubs are doing and and start doing some grassroots fucking radicalism we're gonna radicalize tennessee y'all oh i thought about i was like i was like if i was a if i was a politician i feel like i would just straight up <laughs> like giving a speech i'd be like fuck bill lee i'd be like <laughs> in my speech i'd be like bill lee's a cunt and like just say yeah. shit like that and like you know, because everybody's always like, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe right. that, that he would say that. And just be like, no, fuck Billy. He's a douchebag. And just if I, using if, that. If I wanted to be the president, what I would do right now, you know, I'm 30. I would make a plan for the next 20 years to go talk to everybody in the country on such a small scale. Really just get, you know, everybody on my side low key underneath, right? Oh, yeah. So they don't even see me coming. I'm hitting I remember that guy. Yeah, I don't, what the fuck? He came in and you know we chopped it up. He gave me a beard. That dude, you know, dude was um, funny as fuck. Dude was fucking hilarious. And I'm just and I'm just collecting over the years. You know, mm-hmm. twenty years of this. I'm in normal Illinois. You know, telling people about fucking universal health care. And then I'm <laughs> yeah. over in I'm over Tax in Little credits. Rock, being like, dude, think about it. Isn't isn't pro life just a a misnomer? And then I'm over in fucking. <laughs> Tempe being like, what's up with Tempe? Isn't that some sort of <laughs> meat alternative? Speaking of which, do you know about the climate uh, problems with cows? And, and you know, and I'm <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. for I'm doing this till I'm fifty. Ripe presidential candidate years, you know. Yes. And then I come in hot. They don't see me coming. They don't see the base of support I got. Whew. Sweep. Dude. The problem with Kanye trying to do this stuff is he's trying to align himself too much always with the elites, you know? Yeah. And the powers and the numbers of us, the people. He's a billionaire, dude. You'll be like, I'm not a billionaire. I'm a, I'm a hundred thousandaire. 
Okay. A hundred thousand. I don't million. have that much money. I can um, relate. You know, I'm in, I am in the one percent, but just at, you know? at the very bottom of the one percent. Uh oh. <laughs> we might we might have froze. Um. Did I freeze out? I might have frozen out. Did we lose you? You froze. I froze. Uh oh. <sighs> Y'all, I think we lost Blake. Um, but that's okay. It's been a great episode. Oops, you disconnected due to an internet issue. Your session will be reloaded. Okay. I got nothing to say, yeah, I'm just loving the way you're looking over here, come over here and tell me your name, I can tell by the sound, yeah, when you open your mouth, I hear my new favorite melody, hey, we should both run away.